Good day and welcome to this Thursday's show of truth. I am coming on, I'm on the road and today's topic is going to be by me, from me and I have a friend who will be asking some questions regarding this topic and he should be popping up in the comments. I will navigate how to do this, um, this comment process and so let me see if I can connect him here, but otherwise, just need to see if I can get to the comments here. Do, 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 do. Forgive this little, hi, Danielle. I'm just, uh, do, do, do. Um, Michael, if you want to you can uh request to join or actually i can see your i can see your comments oh. okay so my friend michael is going to be coming on and he's going to be asking some questions and the topic of today is dark day of the soul and the reason why I'm picking this is because I am personally feeling a lot of frustration and I'm working to expand my uh, capacities to uh, shed light on this topic. And this is something that I have seen happen in the spiritual community. Now, discernment is we are all spiritual beings having a human experience. And there are those who identify as being spiritual and or light workers. And so I'm going to have some distinguishes, I'm going to distinguish some things here. And I'm doing this because I'm passionate about de demystifying the fear and the um, dance of like push pull with the darkness. It's inevitable, it's going to happen. But I'm here to demystify a little bit of that because I have been experiencing several beautiful individuals come into my life and they have, in my experience, been somehow misled with regards to the darkness. So that's why I am here. And I am opening this up to Michael if he has any questions, as he is going to be a sacred mirror for me here to help bring out what wants to be shared about the darkness, because this is something him and I are both passionate about and we are here today to do this. Um, if he figures out how to request coming on, he can come on. And otherwise, I will wait for um, his question. So before I see his question, if anyone has anything they want to ask about the darkness, um, I'm open to receiving your questions. And before I receive questions, I will... Um, Shed a little light. It's funny, the sun is just going down right here, so the darkness is coming. Um, some things I will share about the darkness is that nature teaches us about the darkness every single day. Uh, we have the sun here, and then the sun will go down, and then there will be a whole new um, ecosystem that will be born out of there being darkness uh, and nighttime. And let me see what Michael says here. Okay, Michael's gonna be in the comments. Please ask away, Michael. Um, yeah, so where was I? The darkness and the light, very present in nature. We've got the sun and the moon. They're both integral parts of this whole shebang. Um, and so something that I was finding funny today is there's a lot of people who call themselves light workers, and in the light worker community, there is a lot of talk around battling demons, things like false light, and there's a lot of fear. I experience there being a lot of fear on top of the stuff that we already have to deal with. So it's like on top of being a human and just how challenging and beautiful that can be, now we're like in these psychic spiritual league battling wars. Now, I personally don't orient to that version of light working. So then I came up with this distinguishing thing of there's light workers and then there's love workers. And love workers are integrating the shadow and the light. 
So love workers hold a greater field of awareness that includes fifth dimensional consciousness, which is unconditional love. And unconditional love sees uh, that there is no separation between the darkness and the light and that neither one is more glorified or better than or worse than. That is all a part of the false light. So I don't know what most people believe false light is, but to me, false light programming is any idea that causes us to battle with ourselves, to reject parts of ourselves, or anything that keeps us feeling fear. So if you're a spiritual person and you feel fear in relationship to an idea, maybe someone's shared, oh, those are the demons. Oh, those are this. Oh, that's false light. Oh, that's the, the, the reptilians. Oh, that's this. Oh, that's that. If you dancing with that creates more fear and less resolution in your life experience of being a human, I would question that. Because we're here to enjoy our experience of being human. We're here to just be. And that means that as long as we're in this body, there's a sun and there's a moon. There's a light and there's a dark. And those two are interconnected and always dancing with one another. And that's the beauty is that there gets to be this dance, this beautiful weaving of these two completely opposite things. So... um Things like that are have been coming up today are like topics about, well, people really do experience being tormented. People do experience these things like demons and spirits attacking them. And there's like, there's exorcisms and all of that. While I honor that is a valid experience, there's different levels of relating to that same thing. So every human has their own eyeballs, their own projecting image, right? And so some people, when they have a certain story going on in their head, they're going to project this narrative that is these demons are bad, they are after me and they're attacking me. That same experience looked through through a different lens could be like, oh my gosh, look at these angels. They're bringing me blessings and transformation. The same experience, a different perspective. So really, this is all about perspective. And my encouragement and why I'm on here is because I really love all of my friends. I love all of my lightworker people. And I want us to be in love together. Be in love. And if there's something that takes us out of love and starts having us battle with ourselves, like we just can be very subtly aware of that choice. And that's just what I want to empower people with is the choice. You can choose to battle demons all day long, or you can choose to see those demons as beautiful creatures of love. Put on a different pair of sunglasses. It's a choice. So some experience that I've had, and I've done a lot of medicine work, ceremony work. I'm a shadow worker, which just means that I'm comfortable sitting in my shit. Literally, the most enlightening experiences I've ever had have been while I've either been on the toilet in a porta potty at a festival or something to do with decomposting yucky stuff. And it's because I believe it's because we got to have some anchors in the muck. We have to have some anchors on this planet of people who are holding love in the shit. And, and that's... Um, the trickster of life is that we don't really ever get to some ascended level where we're better than the darkness. And if we think we are, we're just perpetuating the very thing that us light workers came here to resolve, which is separation. So the darkness and the light, they are in love with each other. That's why when you're radiating vibrant light, the darkness is like you and, you and you're a little bit in a wonky state of like spiritual wonkiness. You're like, oh my God, the darkness is attracted to my light. Ah, Yes, the darkness is attracted to your light. And we're attracted to the darkness. It's why we're here. We're in this body. We, we're, we're doing this duality dance. Do, 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 do. Um, and... I just thought of, I wonder if, if Michael wants to ask any questions or if anyone wants to ask any questions. Um, but where am I going with this and where am I going with this? Okay. So, um, 
examples. Um, there's these experiences that some individuals have, and uh, mostly if you're going to be on here listening to dark, talk about the darkness, you have some inner awareness and we could go like way spiritual with it or we could go really practical with it practical is sun moon light dark swamps deserts um moles in the ground butterflies above the ground right this like intricate dance and then we could go like psychic wars like demons and angels and uh parasitic energies and like the the uh reptilians and Donald Trump and blah 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 okay and like we could blame all this all day long all day long and if we are doing that we're still being that we are being that same person so like this is where it gets a little tricky and where some spiritual people go a little too far to the left so to speak is that when we start seeing something outside of ourselves and go, oh my gosh, that's bad and that's evil and that's gross and like that, 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 that. But we are not equally willing to see that we are also a murderer. We are also the bad guy. And be willing to face that stuff within ourselves. We're still, we're doing the same thing that those people are doing. Those, the demons. We are being the succubus. We are being the reptilian. We are being the uh, parasite, right? So the parasite is anything that lets us go into fear as a orientation to life, right? So it's like we've got our swords and we're battling life. Ah! Life! No, life is not against us. Life is for us. Every experience, this is a perspective. Now, I want to say... I should have made a disclaimer. I am not the capital T truth teller of the universe. However, I bring a perspective that can sometimes help illuminate the shadow, so to speak. And the irony is that these shadow beings, these demons, these creatures, all they want is love and attention and acknowledgement and a right to exist. It's called coexisting unity consciousness so um i guess like i'm called to share my perspective in the mass meditation for example i didn't do i let a little guided pod and i didn't do any guided meditations to dissolve the coronavirus because i don't believe that the coronavirus is the problem and so why am i going to spend my chi to like try and kill something off that's probably not even the problem. It's that's still coming from my mind. So the thing is, is I'm going to go now to my little journal about what I was going to talk about with regards to the darkness. And my journal. Um, we are entirely of the system. If any point, I'm reading a question. If any point in the system is bad, we all need to change. How do you recommend we position ourselves when we find ourselves in a dark place in action movement, helping to resolve the situation? Um, we're all going to be in dark places. I was in a dark place today. So I'm calling this dark day of the soul because there's this term called dark night of the soul where it's like, oh, I'm going through this dark night of the soul. Well, right now our collective shift, and this is woo woo, has been flipped upside down and like inverted. And so we're seeing everything spewing out. We're seeing all the things that have been hiding under the rocks. It's all coming out now. And so I'm calling this the dark. We're having a collective. Collective means an experience that we're all going through as human beings. We are experiencing a collective dark day of the soul. Okay. All of the things that are wrong, bad, have been undercover and hidden are all out in the open. Everyone has the ability to see them now. It, there's no hiding it. And yet we are still choosing to close our eyes and open our eyes different to different degrees. Now, um, just my own personal practice is if I start feeling something outside of myself or this sense of like oppression, like I am being oppressed by the man or whatever, I just... I well first of all I have a lot of teachers and reflectors in my life and I've also I also have a gift of going into my shadow so I go into these places that are uncomfortable 
And I pretty much have an experience where it's like I'm going to die. I feel like I am dying. And I have to and I choose to allow myself to go there so that I can integrate whatever that uncomfortable experience is trying to teach me. Because I believe that I am a sovereign individual. I am a part of a greater whole. So we have this collective experience where we're all going through some version of the same thing. But I have a choice on how I want to deal with that same thing. And um, I choose to go into these experiences or embrace them or allow them. And then I receive the medicine from them. So this was bringing me to kind of like what I wrote in my journal. And maybe this will, you'll, I'm not, I don't even know if I'm answering your question or not, but you'll, we're, we're hanging out guys, whoever's here. Thank you for listening. Um, the resolution point of this whole fucking thing is no mind. The state of no mind. Because our senses and our perception is so much greater than our minds and our intellect. And when our intellect is in this controlling position where it's running the show, which is like what we see out in the world and what we can see in ourselves when we're judging people out in the world. And that actually is what causes greater... um, Trying to address it from the mind is the wrong dimension of addressing this issue. So that's kind of why I'm like, oh man, this false light thing and all this stuff, it still feels like really intellectual. It feels very much like a heady, like I'm trying to figure this out. And the best medicine that I can recommend is cultivating an open heart. Now I will say having an open heart, you feel shit and it doesn't always feel good. It actually like sucks balls sometimes when... Uh, for example, when I come in with a very huge open heart and I also am still resolving my own wounding and then I have people judge me, right? That hurts. But when I go into my mind to try and address the situation, I create problems. When I address the situation from my heart, I can see the greater picture. I can see this person's feelings. I can feel their feelings and I can experience that they're having a hard time. I can have more compassion, more understanding, more empathy. But the choice to remain open to things that are uncomfortable is a really courageous path. And most people will shy away from that most of the time because When we open our hearts right now to what's going on, there's a lot of fucked up stuff happening. And so the the irony is like, I'm saying unity consciousness, the light and the dark are together and I am choosing love. There are beings on the planet that aren't choosing to operate from love. And that's why we're all sovereign. We all are, we all are individuals. We all have the choice to choose love or something else. Um, so I wrote in my journal, like the solution or the resolution for, um, ah, so I talked about false light. Um, to me, false light is anything that creates an idea of separateness and battling something outside ourselves. So if there's an idea that's like, I'm now battling this evil thing outside myself, then um, that's to me what is false light. And I don't know what y'all think false light is, but um, there's a lot of stories about that. And that's my perspective. Sovereignty, I'm reading a comment. Sovereignty is interesting to me. I was recently brought to the attention that this word means total control Sovereignty is interesting. I was recently brought to the attention that this word means total control, which is not possible, much less desirable as I see. There are always environmental conditions that are out of control. We are participants in the web of life, not sovereign beings in control of anything, even our own bodies. We are not fully separate entities in full control of ourselves. I agree. The example that was brought up is that you can try to hold a shit but at some point it's got to come out. Right. But as sovereign, as I believe that we are sovereign beings in that we can choose love 
or choose. We can choose to hate the shit or we can choose to love the shit. We can choose to like relax our anus and like allow it to slide out or we can clench it until it forces its way out. That's where our sovereignty comes in is we have the choice on how to deal with that shit that's coming out of our ass um, all the time. We're always shitting and we're always sending out energy and um, we don't have full control over any of it, but we have some control. And in those moments, in the control, we have the choice. I don't like the word control. We have some choice. And do we really have choice? I mean, that's a bigger philosophical question. But from this human perspective right now, I'm saying that we have choice. I can choose to fill up my car when it's empty or I can wait until I run out of gas. I mean, I can choose to fill up my car so that it never gets empty or I can choose to let it ride and drive and drive until it runs out of gas. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'll make it to the gas station. I choose. I can choose that. Um, sometimes life circumstances happen where that we can't, feels like we can't choose. Um, I'm just going to look at my notes because there was something I wanted to share from here. Um, so something that I was, that I wrote in my journal was the topic of evil, good and evil. And, um, my medicine to help share any insight on how to resolve this whole, like, darkness battle is to get really 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 still with nature um with the earth get really really still find a safe place where you aren't distracted by other people other people's energy what have you other people's agendas and go sit out somewhere in nature and be, just be and sit and observe for extended periods of time. And a lot of this <clears throat> fear or um, separation, like the, the, like the idea that there's a line of separation will start to dissolve. And I kind of made a joke of like, if you're all by yourself in nature and you're having this like, and you're, if you're all by yourself, no one's around you. You go into meditation. You're completely still physically, mentally, or you're just completely still. And there's this battle happening, this battle. And you're like battling demons in your meditation and stuff. Like that's going on in your mind. Do you like that experience? Is there a softer approach to doing that same work? Is there a different way to do that same work? We're all like battling something. We're all fighting for something. But there's different ways that we can work with these intense energies. And to me, going super mental with it hasn't been productive. It's where I see people commit suicide. It's where I see people try to lock themselves in mental institutions. It's where I see people think they need medication is because they're going super up here and they're not going just into their primal physical bodies and so um, something that I help facilitate is somatic healing and shamanic healing in the body because um, a lot of the times why people want to stay up here and why they're still in these psychic battles is because there's physical trauma in the DNA that's scary and really like dense and it's there's this avoidance but when we go into the body and we're willing to be with all of the things that are super uncomfortable which means like sitting in nature with no food no water going on like a vision quest and just being with yourself as you are my experience is that at some point there's the distinction of the choice to rest into the earth rest into the mother reconnect to our physical roots or to stay super intellectual about it at some point for me, it became so fucking painful to stay intellectual that it's like I had to choose to be in my heart. And being in my heart has been more um, like there's uh, not more. There's a siren being in my heart has been in some ways like it's not more intense. There's a um 
uh, it, it has been at some points more overwhelming to allow for all of that which wants to come through, the feeling center of the heart to come through. Um, but it's been for me the only way. And to me, again, so whoever is doing the real, the, the real work <laughs> is a love worker. And they're bringing integrity through being in the heart, connected all the way to the center of the earth, connecting all the way through the heart up to the center of the cosmos, to the central sun, and then bridging that in the heart and living from that place. Um, I wrote on here with regards to nature and why that helps with resolving the darkness is because I asked, is the earth evil? For those who worry about good and evil, is the earth evil? Is nature evil? I think, I don't think they're evil, but it's a, it's a open question. Is the earth evil? Is nature evil? No. <laughs> I wrote no. Observe nature. Learn. The true nature of darkness. Spend time out in nature. Vision quest, solo experience. And bring all of your dark queries to this place, to nature. Bring all of your dark concerns, all of the things that you, all of your worries, all of your woes. Bring that all to her. Bring that all to the mother, to the earth. She will show you what's true. Listen. Feel. Receive. Not from your intellect. From your feelings. Cry. Scream. Shake. Lie down. Die. Become nothing. Allow yourself to be reborn. I guess a bridge I'm speaking of in this whole resolution of good and evil is just connecting back with Mother Earth. We resolve a lot of our fears and uncertainties when we connect to Mother Earth. And now I'm called to share, though, that like it is real that some places on the planet are disturbed. Um, example, I'm very sensitive to land and to what's happened on a land. And I have experienced going places where the spirits were yelling at me and screaming and raging and the people who owned the property didn't have any sort of connection with land or with spirits and so the energy of the house was disruptive and the people who lived there didn't have any awareness that there was this factor of the earth and how the earth felt about what's happening so a lot of our pain and why we're like staying super intellectual and in all these psychic wars is because we're really not wanting to face how much pain this body is experienced at the result of that intellect. So the, 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 the staying over in the mental wars is the escapism from experiencing the trauma that has been experienced in this planet, on this earth, from that intellect being in control, thinking that it's in control. So the balance of it is getting really, really real with all the shit that we have done. Like, my, my ancestors, not particularly to the people and the natives on this land that I'm, staying, that I'm on right now, which is in New Mexico, but my ancestors have done some terrible things to people, much like what's been done here. And so in my DNA, I have the memory of having done harm. But I am okay with being aware of that because I have experienced the pain of it and I'm still experiencing the pain of it because we're still in this resolution process. Um, so, and at the same time, I brought my friend Michael on here because I'm a very I'm very serious about this but at the same time my seriousness 
comes from my love of the beauty of life. And that's, to me, a light experience, a liberating experience, a um, jovial celebratory experience. Um, another... <laughs> I don't know where my friend Michael is, if he's asking any any other questions or if I've even answered anything. Um, and uh, I'm looking through here. Uh, questions. See if there's any questions here. Um, where was I? Darkness. Yeah, I've got darkness. I've got creepy crawlers lurking in my shadows. Um... I feel a lot of frustration still, and I'm that's partly why I'm on here, this video, because I do shadow work, and I feel like that, that term is misinterpreted and misrepresented, and my dark inner child, my inner child that was abused, molested, raped, like told literally that I, that I, that my parents told me that they wished I never would have been born. So that little dark, that dark shadow inside, that dark child inside, she fucking has a right to exist. And she's not evil. And you want to know what? This is the first time I'm sure. She has had desires to murder people that abused her. Does that mean that she's evil? No. Does that mean that people are evil? No. And the more we can drop our judgments, rest into our love, feel what needs to be felt in that place, and just be okay with it without trying to fix it, solve it, battle it, fight it, the more energy we'll have to bring to the fights that matter, the fights that will actually make the change that we are wanting to seek with the fighting. Accepting the dark child inside me as equally valid to the light child inside me gives me more energy to face the real fights that I want to face, which... I want to bless the land every day. I want to wake up and pray. I want to breathe, eat good food, uh, be available energetically when my friends really, really need it and be able to have the uh, resources to address what's present in my life. And if I was spending all my time in a mental fucking battle I would be missing some of the joy of just being in this sense, sense body. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. It's about time we get really real with the pain that this human experience inevitably comes with and stop pushing it away and running away from it and battling it and whatever and just get real with it so that we can, from that place of honoring and seeing ourselves, bring forth the fight that really matters to us on a deeper level, on a soul level, not just on a mental level. So um, I'm not really sure what else I want to say about this. I will check my notes. If you are someone who's been having a hard time, if you've experienced abuse, and if you are still resolving some of your trauma, reach out to me. I'll be offering donation sessions. This is a new thing for me. Um, I normally work long term with people because of the nature of this work. And um, I'm open to having a few sessions with some individuals who want to actually uh, alchemize and by being present with some of this stuff and be witnessed in a safe place. Um, I love you. I love all of you and it, none of it's going to scare me because I, for, quite frankly, I scare myself more than anyone else can scare me. So my friend who's been reflecting and asking some questions says, 
his words on integrating the light and the shadow. Focus on the light. Focus on the light or the dark keeps us from being attentive. Yeah, focusing on either the light or the dark, swinging on those polarities, keeps us from being attentive. Attentiveness is being. Pres well, I would say presence, being present. Being attentive allows for becoming. Yes, because then we can focus on what's emerging and um, be, we can be witness. We can bear witness to the blossoming that's happening in every moment, the orgasmic blossoming of creation. In becoming, focus can emerge. They are an integration of recent conversations with others. Yeah, focus can emerge. I'm, I'm contemplating what, what, I mean, I would say focus is to me is the same thing as presence um is being a first hand witness of the blossoming that is everything in every moment every being every seed every creature is a blossoming being of the one of the one creation and when we're not, when we're focus, we're not focusing on oh the dark or oh the light or blah, and we're just being present with what is emerging. We are more able to um, anchor in a focal point for our existence. Um, it's interesting that as I'm saying this, what what comes to to me is also the emphasis of being on a mission, being on a on a on a path being like this I am here on a mission and I definitely relate to being on a mission and that mission is not something that I can intellectually cognize with my my brains or my mind my like little mind um it's something that I get to experience I am my mission and the more that I can experience first hand real time what's going on the more I'm just enjoying the experience of my mission which is me which is just me being and um I mean I've I could tell a story of all kinds of battles I've beaten too but ultimately the being um remains the same no matter what the battle is um and i'm feeling a little tired and i'm noticing that the darkness is coming over and so the darkness that is weighing over hold on wait wait let there be light dark light dark light dark light dark light oh my god no wonder it's we're fucking exhausted that is a fucking headache to just be like dark light dark light ah! Yeah, so pretty much we talked about everything I wrote here in my notes. Um, the only thing was like the distinction of how we use the word ascension. And then um, I love the word ascension. I think it encapsulates exactly what's happening. We are coming into greater awareness of ourselves and we are alchemizing more of our light bodies here in these human bodies. And that's my perspective of what ascension is we are becoming more aware of that we are of all that is but i also like the word descension is essentially what ascension is and it's not like you leave your body to go off to this better place no bitches we came from this better place and it's not better we came from this spiritual place we're now here in a human body so let's just touch the dirt take a shit wait wrong order Touch the dirt, eat some food, eat some dirt, play with some bugs, drink some water, take a shit, wash our bodies, hug a dog, make food again. You know, that's what we're doing. We're living. If you watch, again, if you watch and observe nature, they're just being, eating, shitting. They're not evil. Nobody's evil. Um, and then the other part is that 
just a reminder, we all know this, shit is amazing compost. So, um, <laughs> I'm thinking of an old friend and it was just funny and I just, I'll share it just cause it's a funny way of saying it. She loves men and relationships and she's like, that old relationship is the manure that I'm now growing out of. And it's true. Our experiences that are shitty are the exact medicine for us to grow. They're not bad or evil or it's not because we're doing something wrong. We're not being punished and so therefore we need to be perfect. My interpretation of this necessity to be so super superior to the darkness is because the little children inside of you were punished and made wrong for just being so then you thought that there was something wrong with your being so then you tried to be perfect and in your perfection when you integrated that you were a spiritual being having a human experience you twisted that exact thing and became a perfect spiritual person avoiding the fact that the darkness exists within you creating separation even more and more fear and more paranoia and more isolation so this is for all those people who want to find their soul tribe get real with your darkness and then we'll all hang out because really, ultimately, I just want to sing and dance and play. And I can do that in any moment, mostly. Most, I can pretty much dance and sing just at the drop of a hat. Because I'm equally willing to be present with my darkness. And then from that place, I can just live life and be myself, with it, which is this celebration, this joyful celebration of life. And I can do that when shit's going, shit is hitting the fan. And I can, and blown in my face, I can laugh about it. And I can equally laugh and or cry about the sun rising and the light. Like I literally have cried because the beauty of the sun is just so beautiful, right? So, um, I pretty much, I laugh and I cry at the same time now. When I laugh, I end up crying. And when I'm crying, I end up laughing. And they've gone in this this symbiotic flow now. Um, and that's life. I love you. Yin yang integration and then beyond because we are infinite beings and we are having a human experience. And when we can get past the tension of the dance of better or good or light or dark, we can start to experience this place inside of us that's beyond all time and all space. And just is all the things, is the devil and the God. To me, the devil and God are the same. The devil and the God are the same thing. And that is just our externalized darkness and light. We've got God and we've got the devil. So we've identified with God. Most people would rather identify with God than they would rather than they would want to identify with the devil. But they say the devil has more fun. <laughs> Um, and to be honest, like there's no, to be honest, the devil and God are the same thing. And, um, I pray that more humans come into recognition of the illusion of the reality that both are the same thing. And then angels and demons are like the, you know, the, closer to home physical manifestation of dark and the light and uh, both are us and both are equally valid and both are completely beautiful to me um, an experience I had once on a medicine ceremony was um, and I was with people who are really afraid of the darkness. All these dark beings circled around me. And I saw all of these dark beings 
circled around me and they were all surrounding me. And I didn't feel afraid, but that's because, I mean, I grew up in the darkness. <laughs> and so um, the hell that I've crawled myself out of is scarier than those little guys standing around me. But um, because that was just in my mind and the hell I lived was where my physical body was actually being tormented. So um, these little beings in the dark in my medicine journey, these non-physical beings, they're not scary to me. So I, what did I do? I did what I always do. I shared my presence with them. When I shared my presence with these beings, they all got the light of the sun radiated on them. The light of my presence, the light of my inner God, my inner God self radiated light onto these beings. And they weren't scary monsters. They were beings that wanted attention and love and had been kept in the darkness. So love is safe. Fear is safe. Um, I know that a lot of people get freaked out because like there are people that will murder on the planet and that will do these crazy things and do act irrationally. And so discernment's really important. Discernment is of the utmost importance. But the best discernment comes from being willing to actually look at the darkness because sometimes when we're resisting the darkness, we're just resisting feeling a part of ourselves. And when we're resisting feeling a part of ourselves, we're actually in more danger because we're shutting off our senses. So as a primal being, as an animal, it's important that we actually have a accurate fight or flight instinct response because there is danger at times. We do sometimes have to jump out of a car or like, you know, dodge a coyote or whatever, what have you. And those are all real physical experiences. And so when we're able to actually be with our darkness and our dark, dark psychology and our dark feelings and like be willing to look at all of that and shine presence on that, our discernment actually gets better because our instincts are more clear and direct. And we're not turning off some of our senses because we're avoiding looking at something. So um, discernment is of the utmost importance, but the best discernment comes from being willing to equally look at the dark and the light because then we have the actual whole picture. Example, um, because of my energetic sensitivity, sometimes I felt afraid of being around people who are heavy and dense and whatever. The more love I have cultivated and the greater awareness that I've cultivated inside myself that takes me out of my judgmental mind and into my heart has created an expanded awareness where my mind is still afraid of some of these people and some of these energies. But when I just let that do its thing and don't pay attention to that being the, the runner of the show and I remain in my open heart, I actually end up having an amazing connections with these people amazing connections. I mean, today I even just had, I saved myself from driving super far out of town because this is just a real life experience because I was sitting somewhere, pulled over to the side of the road, did a meditation, felt some people come up, felt their wonky energy, yet dropped into my heart and noticed I was safe. I end up having one of those wonky people come up to me, gift me, not just with beautiful flowers that are now laying on my dash, but also cannabis flowers. I got, I got gifted abundance of flowers. We ended up having a beautiful conversation and um, that would not have happened if I was operating from my judgmental, intellectual perspective. Because my judgmental, intellectual perspective is based on an idea that was created in a reality that is not this reality right here, right now. And this is why shadow work is so important. Now, sometimes that shadow work can be things that we've experienced in this life, in our childhood, in our teenage years, even as adults. And sometimes it can, it can go beyond and into other lifetimes. But none of that really matters so much as being willing to be with the shit that's uncomfortable and being willing to let our ego identities of being the good 
girl and the good boy and the doing it right and being clean and refined. And like, if we can just let all that shit go and literally let ourselves die to who we think we are, we'll actually not die at all, but become more whole. Because we'll be taking out, we'll be taking this part from the shadow <laughs> and we'll be bringing it into our conscious awareness. And so um, I'm just really, really, really grateful for this conversation. I'm really, really grateful for whoever's watching. I'm really, really grateful for Michael who was so passionate also about this topic. Michael Murphy, you can see him in the comments, was so passionate about this topic that he was willing to be here and listen and reflect questions. Um, the irony is that Michael is a laughter yoga teacher and he is also equally invested in alchemizing and being facing the darkness. So just to give people perspective in the light working community, someone who does laughter yoga and literally is this like jovial and like really um, practiced lover is equally interested in the shadow and the dark. And some of the most beautiful blessings in my life because this is the other part. And this is a very long topic. This is a very deep topic because we've got like the masculine and the feminine. I would associate the, mas the feminine with being the dark and the masculine with being the light. And so within that, are, we've gone like it culturally, collectively into over masculine, over intellect, over um, not the healthy, like healthy masculine, but like over intellectualization. And less feeling, more thinking, less being, more doing. And now we're switching. And that's why everyone is having a hard time is because we're not able to hide from ourselves anymore. And so all of that stuff's coming up and we can fight it or we can embrace it. It's really up to us. And we, we have that choice. But do you want to, do you, we have the choice to either be dragged by the truck or like surf the truck, right? Surf the wave be dragged tossed turned by the wave one involves surrender and listening and softness and receptivity and feeling and the other one involves lots of chaos and usually comes from this tense relation to the to nature um i feel like i'm rambling but i am i know i'm not rambling and maybe i am rambling and whatever it's a little bit of both um what else do I want to say about the darkness and the light? Oh, is that the darkness is the mystery. And personally, I'm super interested in the darkness because I want to live in a way that is magical. I want to experience magic. I want to live a life that is magical day to day. And I do. But that comes from a resting into the unknown. Magic is mysterious. It's, it's, we can do all these things. We can create the ritual. We can create the altar. We can create the sigil. We can create the spell. We can cast all we want, but there's this whole other part of us that's called the mystery that also needs to meet us in that magic. And so for me, my interest in the darkness does not come from some evil maleficent demon conjuring place, but it comes from a place of being so fucking stoked about the process of mystery and magic and so I choose to dance with the darkness which is the mystery which is you see you can't see this side of my face but that doesn't mean it's not there maybe to your maybe to your eyes you don't see anything Maybe you could imagine, oh, if this is what this part looks like, maybe this is, this looks like something. Maybe it looks the same, right? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe this side of my face has been completely burned. You wouldn't know if this was all you saw. This is the mystery. But really, it's not that mysterious. It's so beautiful. Oh my God, look at this beautiful face. Okay, um... The mystery, although it's scary to the intellect, is nothing to be afraid of. My dear, dear friends, 
love workers, light workers. It is something to be embraced, loved, and held in equal proportion to the light. I love you. This is all I have to say for now. Please reach out to me if you have any more questions. I offer one-on-one -on -one healing work as well. And that can look like a myriad of options. Um, COVID's happening right now. So virtual unless we have some way to get in person together. And um, come on. Let yourself be seen. Let all of yourself be seen. And I'm willing to be a witness for you and hold complete loving space. Whether you rage or whether you laugh or whether you're scared or whether you're happy or confident, I'm here to witness you in all of it. Um, a link to schedule a call with me is calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y dot com slash truth. This is an opportunity that we all have right now in this like internal quarantined, quarantined time to, we have time. We have more time. Most people have more time now. It's not real. We always have. We always have. The reality is that we always have time for healing. We always have time to look at ourselves. And it's just really whether we choose to prioritize that or not. And so right now that we're not able to work in all these things, like as a collective, most of that's been shut down. We have less valid excuses for facing ourselves. So cheers. I love you. Share this if you feel inspired. And thank you for sharing um, yourself with uh the light with thank <laughs> thank you for sharing yourself by showing up and listening to this video and if you've listened to this whole video i commend you and i super am stoked and we should probably have a conversation so um again i will thank my friend michael as well for being willing to ask questions uh, about this topic i asked him to assist and thank you for everyone who's watched and again, if you want support, calendly.com slash truth. And until then, may both the darkness and the light meet you in the center of your heart. And may you be reborn to know your true self beyond and including all of it. Blessings, many blessings from currently New Mexico and the cosmos. <laughs> Love you guys.